In the year 1971, NASA sent the Mariner 9 spacecraft to orbit around the planet Mars, and upon arrival, they were welcomed with a global dust storm which hindered their ability to take pictures of the surface. However, as scientists patiently waited for the dust to settle, they quickly realized that there was a mountain that was peeking out above the dust clouds, and later they quickly realized that this wasn't actually a mountain at all, but rather the tallest volcano in the entire solar system. So how massive is this object? Object, and could we ever send a robotic mission to explore it? Let's talk about that. Now this volcano was given the name Olympus Mons, and that name is really fitting because Olympus comes from the term in ancient Greek mythology referring to the home of the 12 Olympian gods. Now in order to actually classify how tall this object is, we must first understand that it's pretty wide as well. In fact, it's 550 kilometers wide, which is approximately the size of the country France or the state Arizona, which is incredibly massive. Then if you want to classify its actual height, well, do you compare it to the surrounding region or the average elevation on Mars? Because if you compare it to the surrounding region, then it's 22 kilometers higher than that. But then if you compare it to the average elevation of Mars, it's 27 kilometers higher than that, which is a little bit more than twice the height of Mount Everest. That just puts things into perspective on how absolutely massive this volcano truly is. But that's not all. If you were on the peak of Olympus Mons, you would actually be incredibly close to just being in the vacuum of space. The atmospheric pressure at this altitude is only 12% of the typical atmospheric pressure on Mars, meaning you're only a couple kilometers or a couple miles away from being in space, which is pretty incredible to think about that this volcano can reach so tall. But that's not all. The volcano itself is actually a shield volcano, and when we think about this here on Earth, they have this dome-like shape and aren't very peak-like, like we might think of a mountain, but rather a gradual hill. However, this dome volcano does sit on its own plateau of a sense. The, some of the cliffs that are on the side of this are similar to that of cliffs that we see maybe on the beaches or on the west coast of the United States, where the cliffs could be maybe tens or in some places a hundred meters tall. However, for Olympus Mons, it's a little bit bigger. In some locations, it's thought that these cliffs can be kilometers tall, meaning you have a cliff being the beginning of a dome volcano, which is pretty impressive. So now that we know that this volcano is truly massive, and in fact the largest volcano in the entire solar system, and the largest planetary mountain in the solar system, this leads to the question of, how did it get so big? And there are multiple answers for this. The first one being that the Martian gravity being lower than Earth's gravity allows for magma to get up to the surface much easier and then spread out along the surface when it grows this massive volcano. In addition, Mars doesn't have tectonic plates like Earth does. In fact, it's rather still. Therefore, underneath the surface of Mars, there might be this very hot segment that is eventually getting lava or magma to the surface. But then on Earth, we have plates that are slowly changing or going under or over each other. Therefore, what ends up happening on Earth is we have some of this ring of volcanoes or chains of them instead of having just one or two massive volcano like we see on Mars. Now speaking of the fact that since it doesn't have these tectonic plates and it's building this massive volcano, it's actually not by itself in this region, a region called Tharis. And as you can see by this topographic map, it's actually reddish white in these regions and there are multiple of these very large shield volcanoes in this region. Now because of all these studies that have been looking at these volcanoes, there have been a lot of different images as you see now of Olympus Mons. In fact, you can see different lava flows or channels where lava used to flow and you can also see on the top of Olympus Mons there are multiple calderas or the caps to the volcanoes after previous eruptions. Now then this leads to the question of is Olympus Mons active? And when we think about active, the terminology here on Earth means that the volcano itself has actually erupted within the last 10,000 years. However, for Mars, 10,000 years is a very short time frame. In fact, it's thought the last eruption of Olympus Mons happened around 100 million years ago. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it can never erupt again. In fact, some geologists do in fact believe that it isn't extinct and that there could be an eruption in the future, but most likely not in the next thousand or even million years just because of how rarely these eruptions could occur. But it could make a drastic difference of what the surface of Mars looks like, or at least the region around Olympus Mons. So seeing such an event would be 
be truly incredible, but I highly doubt something like that would happen in our lifetime. Now, all this information about this incredible location on the surface of Mars has you wondering, can we send a rover to land on the top of Olympus Mons and take some incredible pictures and get a lot of great data about volcanic activity on Mars? And the answer to that is, Unfortunately, no. I have an entire video talking about how exactly we land on Mars, and if you remember early in this video, I said that the peak of Olympus Mons only has around 12% of the average atmosphere of Mars itself, meaning it's almost in the vacuum of space. And therefore, when trying to land something on Mars, we try and utilize as much atmospheric drag as we can so that we don't have to use as much fuel to slowly ease us down to the surface. Therefore, landing something on the peak of Olympus Mons would take an incredible amount of fuel and therefore wouldn't necessarily be a great idea. And then you may ask, well, why don't we just land a rover maybe on the outskirts of Olympus Mons and then climb to the top? But remember, this thing is 550 kilometers wide, and you'd have to climb around 22 kilometers tall, not including the kilometer high cliffs and the different channels you'd have to travel through, and all of that with a rover would practically be impossible when you look at the Curiosity rover, which has only been able to climb a couple hundred meters over the course of maybe five years. So then that might lead you to your final question of, can we send crew to the base of Olympus Mons and set them on a journey of one of the greatest mountaineering experience of all of humanity? And the answer to that is, well, theoretically, yes. I mean, we haven't sent anyone to Mars yet, but in the future, we could technically send a people there have a mobile base that basically comes with them as they travel up the various cliffs and valleys. But for the most part, you'd have to have a really well thought out plan of how you'd actually get to the top. But in the meantime, all we can really do are watch animations like these. Now this animation was creating using data from various NASA missions, and if you'd like to watch more, the link to it is in the description down below. But this leads me to the question that I want to lead for you. Would you be willing to go on a voyage that climbs Olympus Mons, and if so, how long do you think that voyage will take? A couple months? Maybe a Martian year? Let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. If not, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.